Uh, it's very good to be with you in Prague. Uh, we're going to uh, make a presentation of uh, uh, the way we see uh, the bank at repair. I uh, currently uh, do mainly shoulder and elbow surgery in southern France, and uh, we switched from open to arthroscopic techniques uh, since about 10 years. Now we do mainly uh, uh, arthroscopic repair for cases that qualify for arth arthroscopic repair, and we do some open uh, fixations in cases where um, we do uh, rep repair for sports contact and people who have bony lesions. So the topic will be how we fix a Bankart lesion and how we can manage the assessment of the patient. This lecture is dedicated to my professor who taught me arthroscopy and who died very young at the age of 47. And uh, each time I do a uh, shoulder talk about arthroscopy, I think about him because he showed me what's inside the shoulder. Things I was not seeing before were uh, clear because of him. So basically, a Bankart lesion is a, a rupture of um, the capsule and of the ligaments uh, in the anterior and inferior part of the glenohumeral joint. When we think about uh, this lesion, it comes obviously that the anatomy of this region is special. When you go inside the joint, if you go in an open way, you open the joint, you can see the capsule, but it is pretty difficult to see the glenohumeral ligaments and to make individual assessment of the ligaments. When you go inside the joint with a scope, it becomes obvious that the capsule, in fact, is reinforced with the ligaments. And when you repair the ligaments, you repair the ligaments with the capsule. So one other point is that when the shoulder becomes disrupted and the humeral head goes out of the joint, the anterior part of the capsule will torn because the uh, anatomy of this capsule is switched. That is why when we want to repair correctly a lesion, uh, we should bring this part of the capsule at this point because usually this part of the capsule will be here and this part of the capsule will be here and here you will probably have a hole. So that is why the appropriate assessment of a Bankart lesion should be done properly uh, with, with a scope uh, when we go inside the joint. Before uh, proceeding, we have to be sure that the patient is good for surgery. That means that we have to be uh, aware that laxity is one thing and instability is another. A shoulder can be la lax and can give dislocation or can be lax and give subluxations. In order to be sure about that, we have to be careful with the patient age and the dislocation, number of dislocations, how the patient describes the dislocations, because some of them they will come and say, I'm dislocating all the time, but in fact they don't dislocate and just subluxate. So the history has to be very well assessed. Then according to that, we can uh, the, diagnose the type of instability. And after that, we have to be aware about the type of activity the patient is involved in. Is he a sports person? Is he, a, uh, you know, active? Is it a female, a male? Uh, have good, uh, strong joints, or is it a, a, a tiny person? Professor Madsen from Seattle uh, did uh, 20 years ago a very nice description of the types of instability. So basically, he described the, the tubs, the traumatic unidirectional Bankart lesion uh, responding to surgery uh, instability, as opposed to the embry, atraumatic, multidirectional, bilateral, that responds to rehab, that takes uh, a lesion uh, uh, at the interval rotator, and that is uh, responding to a stretching of the inferior capsule. And there is one more thing we can assess, uh, usually in patients who had multiple dislocations, is the arthropathy after multiple dislocations that is called post-capsular arthropathy that can appear after surgical repair. 
The ages are very important. When you see patients with instability, atraumatic instability, usually they are females and they are around 20 years old. So when you see a lady coming in your office with instability, it is probably uh, due to laxity and not, it is not a real traumatic lesion, unless you are sure about that and you have all the exams for that. Traumatic instability occurs between 20 and 30, so the patients are a little bit older. They are more male than female. And the post-capsulography arthropathy occurs in patients who had repairs and who are now 35, 40, 45 years old. So this, that's another type of patient. This is a patient that you can see uh, very easily with the laxity. So it's a young lady, good-looking, nice person, making hyperextension of the elbow. She's able to turn the hips at 90 degrees. And when you make a test with a 2 kilogram um, weight uh, in the x-ray, you will see that uh, if the patient controls the shoulder, it will be in this position. The center of the humeral head will be well aligned. And if it leaves the shoulder going down, the shoulder will subluxate inferiorly. So this is laxity. The physical exam will take in account the exam for laxity and the provocative tests. Basically, you will sit in front of the patient or in the back and you will try to see in which direction the humeral head will go by keeping the humeral head firmly and by asking from the patient to uh, relax and making the drawer test, the sulcus sign, to be keep, keeping the arm in the low, and then make the apprehension test. And basically, you will be uh, aware of what type of lesion is uh, there. So when we put a scope in, I use uh, uh, the scope from uh, in beach chair. So many surgeons use lateral decubitus. Uh, many surgeons use... Um, beach chair. I used to uh, start like that and I'm doing that regularly and um, the advantage is that the installation is simpler and the, uh, the possibility to repair is uh, very good. So when we go inside we should look for the key point of the glenohumeral joint that is the long head of the biceps. The long head of the biceps is uh, connected to the labrum. There is a big uh, a bunch of, uh, uh, a big chunk of uh, fibrous tissue, like a meniscus, and it is well inserted in that area. This area is reinforced by the superior glenohumeral ligament. And when you turn the scope, you will see the labrum, and here there is a gap that is a sign for a rupture of the labrum, and this is the subscapularis muscle. So when you turn the scope, if you look from above, you, you know that the scope have an angle of 30 degrees. So when you turn the scope, you can watch your uh, glenohumeral ligament from above. And when you see this area, this is the area that should be repaired. Then... Um, we have to evaluate the lesion. So we go on and we make an anterior portal. Uh, actually, we do two anterior portals when we start repairing. When you become very comfortable uh, with uh, repair, you can use one single bigger portal, but uh, I would not recommend that for uh, if, when you begin doing repairs. And uh, by this anterior portal, you can put in your tools for assessing the lesion and fixing the labrum. So these are different types of lesions. Uh, this is a typical Bankert lesion with a big rupture of the labrum going from up, that's 12 o'clock to 6 o'clock. This is a typical Bankert lesion that can be uh, assessed with a probe. This is a traumatic, fresh Bankert lesion in a skier who had a, a two dislocations, so we did a surgery uh, immediately after the accident, like within 10 days. And this is another type of banker lesion. So in all these cases, you can see clearly 
that the capsule and the ligaments are torn and are leaving uh, the humeral head in a gap where it can dislocate. So when we uh, assess this area, we think about putting back the capsule to the bone. We can put that capsule back to the bone using uh, tools and sutures. So when we do it in an open manner, we are not very precise about where we put our anchors. When we do it with a scope, the fact that we have small and strong tools allow us to put one, two, or three anchors in order to make the reinsertion of the capsule and of the ligaments to the, to the bone. So these are different types of uh, uh, steps in uh, doing the repair. So this is how we see the ligament when we go in. Then we assess the gap. Then we clean the gap. Then we put two uh, cannulas in because the two cannulas will allow us to switch the sutures. And then we, after preparing the bone, we go in and we drill um, in order to put an anchor in. Then we put the anchor that comes with the sutures inside the bone. We, f we test the strength of the suture. And then we use a tool that uh, is called a suture passer. Uh, and there are several available. I use uh, the Limvatec tool. And that allows us to put a wire that will go through the capsule. We take back this wire on the on the cannula, and we use that suture as a suture passer for our uh, uh, suture. So after that, we make a knot, and we secure the ligament to the bone. So that's basically how we fix back a ligament to the bone. Of course, the repair have to, be, have to follow several steps. We have to be sure that when we do the first suture, we bring back as much capsule as we can from the inferior part of the capsule in order to re take up the ligaments and the capsule. This is a true instability with the hill sax lesion. This type of uh, lesion is what we see regularly in a sports person. This is a nice shoulder, never had uh, more trauma than a dislocation. We can see very nicely the gap in the bone, and sometimes this gap is very big. If the gap is very big, and if the dislocations are very frequent, we should think about doing some more um, repair and sometimes filling the bone with subscapularis. But this is more advanced, and that should be uh, addressed when, uh, after testing, we, we have still instability with bone insufficiency after the repair. Then the fixation can be done very nicely with, uh, with uh, the anchors and the sutures, and uh, we can finally test with a probe the fact that the ligament is back to the bone, and then we cannot put the probe back in. It's nicely filled, and it will be good. In uh, sports people, uh, people who have uh, laxity and um, who show with... Um, instability and laxity, we can do a capsule lacbral repair. Uh, that means we can shrink the capsule and uh, take back capsule to the bone. And this procedure can be very useful in people who have laxity and anterior instability with laxity, like in people who are throwers. That's another lesion that we can uh, fix with this type of uh, anchor. Uh, it's a small bankert lesion that, that this one can be fixed with one or two anchors. Uh, in fact, the number of anchors you will use is depending on the number of centimeters you have uh, with a torn ligament. So for about two centimeters bankert lesion, we use two or three anchors. For a small lesion, we can use one or two anchors. So this is how we can... Uh, make a suture passer uh, and uh, uh, make a switching uh, suture for fixing the ligament back to the bone. And this is how it works uh, once the capsule is 
uh, filled uh, with the suture. The lesions in sports uh, are uh, very well known. So there are common lesions and there are discrete lesions. People who are doing sports, they come to see you more often for discrete lesions because they have un in comfort, they are not well when doing sports, more than for typical lesions. Because you'd know very well if a fighter or if a, a handball player had a true dislocation, he will have a true hill sax lesion, he will have a true Bankart lesion, and you will have a regular Bankart repair. But sometimes the patient will come only for sub small dislocations for pain, and these are discrete lesions. Those discrete lesions should be assessed very properly. Because if you do a Bankart repair, in a patient who have a small instability and no dislocation, you can have a stiff shoulder and a very frustrated patient. And this is what happens in 34% of the cases when we do repair for instability in sports people. So when we do sports people, we have to be very, very careful. So typical lesions are those traumatic instability um, the fractures, contusions, sprains, AC joint pathologies. So these lesions are around the shoulder and should be very carefully assessed when the patient comes to see you for, let's call that shoulder discomfort, instability, or he will come to see you for, for an unhappy, unhappy shoulder. But when you go in with a scope, you can be able to distinguish labral lesion with no dislocations, bicipital origin lesions, that's what we call slap, superior labrum, anterior and posterior, <clears throat> calf lesions in young patients, and inflammation and non-specific lesions. So these lesions are uh, followed. Uh, uh, in my practice, I see many uh, patients with sports and I know that uh, non-genetic laxity stabilizes after 25. So when I have a sports person, usually a female, like 22, frustrated, say the shoulder pops and the clicks, and they, I put it on the rehab program, they will usually become better and they don't need surgery. There is a lesion uh, classification by a colleague from Korea who made a... Um, repertoire of uh, those discrete lesions. So he will speak about incomplete detachment of the labrum that can be shaved or fixed. He will speak about the incomplete avulsion, about the labrum erosion, and about the delamination. These are also only arthroscopic findings. From a practical point of view, this lesion should not be completely uh, fixed or repaired because it will result in stiffness. So this incomplete detachment is an intraoperative finding. So it should not be repaired. This is how the shoulder subluxates in sports. So this lesion is not a true lesion. It, if, it, if, it fix, it's, if, if it's fixed, it can result in stiffness. This is a true labral lesion that should be fixed. This is how it looks. If, it's, if the shoulder is unstable under anesthesia, we should fix it. If not, we should leave it. This is a posterior superior labrum lesion. For um, people who do sport arthroscopy, sports people, and uh, who see that type of lesion, like in a handball or volleyball player, you should be aware that if you fix this lesion, this sports person will never be strong like before. So. I had uh, this experience with uh, patients playing for France in handball. And if you fix that posterior superior lesion very tightly, their speed of throw will decrease because it is because they have this small posterior instability that they can arm the, the hand very strongly and they can throw the ball at 120 kilometers an hour. When If you fix the lesion, they can make 80. Other types of lesions you can uh, see with, uh, uh, with they accompany lesions like the Bankart are the bicipital insertions. They can show with synovitis that can be shaved nicely. 
They can show with a rotator interval associated lesion that should be uh, uh, closed. They can show also with uh, irreparable biceps uh, dilaceration and that should be tenodized. So my attitude when seeing a patient with instability, especially in sports, if to be very careful with the pre-op examination and seeing what the patient really wants, why is he coming to see me? Uh, to define the type of laxity, to determine the level of competition, and to fix the anatomic lesions related to the symptoms and not only to the arthroscopic findings. Because if you just fix the findings, it's like when we operate after x-rays. We cannot fix all the x-rays findings. Thank you so much for your attention. Thank you for synoptical presentation and now discussion. Some questions? Sir. Please. Thank you, Dr. Scarlett. In some patients, uh, the lower lesion extends beyond the <coughs> C1 